everyone and welcome back to the Commodore Room. This is the disk drive that we've been playing with the last couple videos. Recall in the first video we took out the linear transformer, reworked the power circuits in order to use a switch mode power supply, saved about three pounds of weight in the process, got rid of some of those very large electrolytic capacitors to prevent leakage in the future. In our uh, second video we then added this button here to select different ROM images. So to, right now it's in stock Commodore DOS mode and by pushing the button we switched the ROMs to a second 8K bank of a 16K EEPROM and now we're in Jiffy DOS and so we have this nice indicator that lets us know we have a very nice and sleek button right here that doesn't protrude can't get broken off kinda like this design I think it works really well the only thing that I really don't like about it is that on occasion depending on what the disk drive is doing pushing this button can cause the drive to crash Certainly never want to push the button while it's writing data to the disk. You're going to lose data as soon as you do that. But I don't like that random chance that I have to go back here and hit this button and power cycle the drive. Seems a bit annoying. I just It's not as user friendly as I would like. And to be honest, I'm kind of lazy. So I just want to be able to hit this button and use it. So what we're going to do is modify this drive such that upon the change of state of the button, in other words, when the button is pressed, this drive will reset itself and be ready to go. Schematic for the 1541. Over here, you can see the 6502. This is the CPU. Pin 40 on the 6502 is reset, and reset is active low, which is what the bar means above the RES. What that means is under normal operation, there's a 5 volts or a 1 going to that pin, and in order to trigger a reset, that pin must be brought low or zero volts. So now let's go and see where that trace comes from. And what we're going to find is it comes to this point here and then all the way down to UD3. UD3 is an exclusive OR chip and as you can see here is connected up to the two serial ports. So when a signal comes in UD3 sees it and then decides whether or not to bring that line low. If you trace this up, you'll see that it resets a number of different things. The interesting thing here is that pin 4 is tied to ground. What we are going to do is disconnect pin 4 from ground and use that as an input from our ROM select or our bank select signal from the last circuit that we built. That should fire the stock Commodore reset circuitry when we push the button. The one thing that we will need though is some sort of edge detection circuit. Our switch is either open or closed and in order to get the proper signal out of this we don't want to hold this line for very long so we just essentially want to send a pulse in that will just send that reset signal downstream to the other chips and then bring the line back high again such that the chips don't stay in a constant state of reset. If you held this line here, pin 40 on the 6502 low, it would essentially not do anything. It would be stuck resetting essentially forever. So we just need a pulse to come through here enough to trigger this but not one that lasts long enough that we can't use the device. So we're going to need an edge detection circuit to go along with this slight change to the board. What we're looking at here is a slight modification to the circuit we designed last time. Pretty much everything up at this top portion is exactly the same and what we've added down here is what's going to drive the reset uh, functionality. What we've added here is a 4070 which is an exclusive OR logic chip and happens to be the exclusive OR chip that I have lying around and we've got some capacitors and resistors in here to basically control the pulse and so what this is going to do is going to go into pin 4 on UD3 and that should do what we need. Now the one thing that's interesting to notice here is we're just going to tie that directly in to the line, the, chip, the bank select. So we're going to tie this circuit right here directly in to the bank selector. So anytime the bank selector changes, we should get a pulse out of this pin right here that goes to UD3. 
As we saw in the schematic, UD3, this chip right down here, is the one that's responsible for resetting the drive upon activation of a device on the serial bus. So we're going to pull that guy off, put a socket underneath him, and tap into pin 4, which is tied to ground right now, but we will then tie that into our chip select circuit, and that should give us a nice, clean way to reset this device when the button is pressed. As you can see, when I unsoldered it, I broke it. Um, never, never quite had this happen before, but as you can see, a chunk of the the uh, plastic case kind of came apart, and the pin obviously came off. So, luckily, I've got some spare parts, and I've got some of these lying around, so I'll replace it. But that's uh, interesting. I guess I need to be more careful. It's not supposed to look like that. Okay, we've got the socket on. And just to make sure everything works, I'm going to go ahead and put in the replacement A6 just to be sure. And I'll power it up, make sure everything's okay before we go too much further. As always, I like to prototype everything just to make sure everything works as expected before I go to the trouble of building the circuit. So, you can see here we've got the circuit built that I showed the schematic for just a little bit ago. And it is jumpered in to the 1541. A couple of those wires are power and some basic things. The rest of it is all jumpered in as it needs to be. So, let's see if it works. Okay, so we see that our disk drive has the green light with the green LED is illuminated. And we have Commodore DOS. So, just in case you can't see that. CBM DOS. Excellent. Now, I'm going to push the bank selector, which will flip us over to Jiffy DOS. You'll notice that the drive reset. And now we're at Jiffy DOS. As you can see there. So, every time the bank selector or the ROM selector button is pushed, the drive, based on our circuit, will reset using the standard reset code and circuitry that is in the 1541. Excellent. This is much better for lazy people like me. So now, all we have left to do is to put this onto a board, mount it, wire everything up, and put it back together. Building the circuit is a matter of drilling some holes and mounting all the components. I'm going to use a socket like I always do, and this time I'm going to skip some of the disconnects, mainly because I'm just a little bit lazy today. Ideally, I would have made this on one board, as I mentioned earlier, and then the disconnects make a lot of sense. But given this was sort of a last-minute idea that I had, I think we're just going to skip it for now. I find that if I take my time and I'm not in a big hurry, these projects go a lot better. And generally speaking, I usually have a fully functional circuit the very first time. And there we have it. The second board is installed, as you can see here, right behind the first one. And we're pretty much ready to test it. I think everything looks good and fits in there nice and solid. I'm feeling a little bit cocky today, so I'm not even going to turn it on. I'm going to go ahead, screw the case down, and fire it up for the very first time. Our test went well, and I'm pretty sure it's just going to work. Okay, we've got the 1541 connected to the Yellow Beast from a previous video. We see the green light is on. This sh should mean it is Commodore DOS. And it is Commodore DOS. We're going to push the button. Changes to blue. Notice that the drive reset itself. And now we're at Jiffy DOS. And we should be able to go back and forth as much as we want. Awesome. So, what we have is a Commodore 1541 disk drive where we replaced the power supply and reworked some of the circuitry to make it a lot lighter, generate a lot less heat, remove some components that are prone to failure, especially as they age. We've added a switch to allow us to go between different ROM images. We've uh, put in a multicolor LED that switches colors depending on the position of the ROM switch. And we've added a circuit 
to reset the drive whenever we push this button. So since I'm really lazy, we no longer have to go back and flip this power button every time we push the ROM image or if the drive were to get very confused. So I'm going to call this one pretty much done. I hope you'd enjoyed this journey with this Commodore 1541 disk drive and some of the modifications we've made to it. I certainly appreciate everyone watching the video. If you like this video, please give us a thumbs up. If you enjoy this type of content, feel free to subscribe. And we hope you come hang out in the Commodore room again real soon.